Hi, it's Mike from Microsoft Box and Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at how easy it is to install the Deepcool AK620 on your AM4 platform. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to install Deepcool's AK620 on your AM4 platform. We're going to be using a Ryzen 5 3600 on a MSI B550 Gaming Plus motherboard. Pretty much it's going to be exactly the same for your setups on AM4 platforms, so no problems there. Obviously, if you do have any comments or questions, feel free to let us know in the comments section below and we'll help you out as much as we possibly can. But you should find this to be pretty much the same for all platforms. So, what are you going to need to actually do this? So first, obviously, motherboard processor, you're going to need your cooler, and there are some tools as well, so included in the box. You've got the long screwdriver, Phillips type screwdriver. You can, of course, if you want to, you can use your own one if you have a preference. You will also need the actual mounting hardware for the AM4 platform taken out of the bags from inside the box. So first of all, you're gonna need the two brackets, which are the AM3 stroke AM4 brackets. So make sure you've got those. You'll also need the four standoffs, which are included with the little plastic spacers on the bottom. There are also four thumb screws, which go on the top after. You'll need some thermal compound, which is uh, kindly included in the packaging. Obviously, if you want to, you can swap this out for the thermal compound of your choice. And also there is the PWM splitter for combining two fans into one CPU header port. So in order to start off, the first thing you need to do from your AM4 motherboard is to remove the two plastic retention clips and also the four screws. So we'll get on and do that first of all. Leaving the AM4 backplate in position, we can now attach the deep cool spacers and screws, these ones from the kit. No tools are required for this, these just can go on hand tight. And the plastic bit goes at the bottom, and that is designed to prevent any damage from the screws to the motherboard. Once you've got all four in place, Go ahead and just make sure they're all nice and tight. Again, no tools required, just hand tight. Next thing to do is to grab your two M4 brackets. So these ones here, you will notice actually on the brackets themselves, there is a marker on there that says CPU and it points to where the CPU would be. So the arrow points towards the CPU, so that makes installation very easy. And put the brackets over the top of the protruding poles. So that's that section done. The next part is to put on, these are the thumb screws or knurled screws, and put them on with the screwdriver head facing upwards. One side is circular, the other side has got the screwdriver head, so make sure you've got the screwdriver head on the top. You can just do these hand tight if you wish to, but some people may prefer once they're actually put on and done up the thumb tight or hand tights even, you can then get your screwdriver and give them a little bit more torque. In fact, that is what I'm gonna do. These don't need to be overly tight, just as long as the whole section isn't moving around. When you're finished, you should find that the whole thing is solid and stays in place. The next part of the project is to remove the fans actually from the cooler itself. So with either fingers or thumbnails on the side, just lever the brackets off and put the fans to one side. Both of the fans are identical so it doesn't matter about placement if you put one in the front and one in the rear etc that's not a problem at all. Now something you can do which is something to think about when we actually put them back on is because this is a symmetrical cooler you can if you want to depending on the clearance issues you've got you can either put a fan on the front middle or the middle and the rear depending on which works best for you. Make sure before you actually put the cooler onto the system that you remove the sticker from the bottom. And if you want to, now's a good time to get some isopropyl alcohol or some kind of cleaning substitute and just clean the base plate in case there's any sticky residue left over. Now we can apply some thermal compound. Doesn't need to be a great deal. Just a small X or a blob in the middle is gonna be absolutely fine. Thank you. 
And when that's done, you can then mount the cooler on the top. So what we're gonna be wanting to do now, where we've got the poles protruding there, those match up with the screws, which are there and there. And if you line one up, first of all, and you should find the other one sits over the top quite easily. Next thing to do is to grab your long screwdriver and drop it down in between the two towers. And just do a couple of rotations. Just to get things started. Once you've got one started, move over to the other side. You may need to apply a little bit of pressure. And then just repeat the process, about three or four rotations, and then just swap over in between and do a few more turns. Alternating the fastening will give you a more even pressure. Once it gets to the end, just make sure that both are tightened up. You don't want to over tighten it, but as soon as you feel a little bit of resistance on there, feel free to stop. At which point, if you want to, you can just try and gently rock the cooler just to make sure that it is firmly attached. If for some reason you get to the point and you can't get enough pressure on there, check your mounting mechanism, but what you can also do in the middle of the tower, there is a small cross-headed screw. You can, if you want to, loosen that off very slightly just to give you a little bit more play. Just make sure you tighten it back up when you're done. The next part is to attach the fans to the cooler itself. So decide on your operational method. So if you want one on the RAM side, you can do that. Obviously, if you've got RAM clearance issues, you can just choose to do the middle and the rear. Again, entirely up to you. Only go with the default installation method. Try and line up the top edge of the fan to the top edge of the cooler and just hold it in front and again with a little bit of slight pressure if you do both sides pretty much at the same time and just push the clip into place and do the same on the other side also. When it comes to the middle fan you may find it helpful to actually make sure the cable is rooted correctly and push it in slightly just so that it doesn't protrude. If it's like this, you may find it catching actually on the fin stack. So just push it in so it fits in nicely. Again, just run the fan down through the middle, holding onto the clamps on the side. Line up approximately the top edge of the fan with the top edge of the cooler itself and just stretch the clips over on both sides. And that is it for the installation. The next part is uh, somewhat optional, depending on your motherboard. So this has got two fans. So if you've got two fan headers, CPU one and CPU optional, or CPU one, CPU two, then you can plug both fans into individual headers. If you've only got the one header or you wanna be able to control the RPMs exactly, then using the fan splitter, all you wanna do is to grab the two PWM connections coming off, plug them into the splitter, and then take the single PWM connection and connect that to your CPU header. On this particular board, the CPU header is at the top here. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug that in. A Little bit of cable management and that is pretty much it done. So hopefully this video is gonna be helpful to those of you that have bought the absolutely brilliant AK620 cooler. Very, very simple to install. It really is a dream cooler to install as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully you feel the same way too and uh, you enjoy your purchase. Like I said in the video, if you've got any comments or questions or anything you didn't quite understand, please feel free to reach out in that comment section below or alternatively, we do have a Discord chat server which you're more than welcome to join. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.